I've always thought that you should own up to your mistakes, and when it comes to the M2 MacBook Air, I've made quite a big one. This is the M2 MacBook Air. It pretty much runs this business behind the scenes. So for everything that isn't production related, whether it be email, writing, all the normal kind of admin-y type stuff happens on this laptop. And just like my M1 version, this is the base model. So it has a 256 gigabyte SSD and eight gigabytes of unified memory. To preface this story, about 12 months ago, I took the M1 version of the MacBook Air to Montreal. And while I was there, I found myself needing to do some video editing. It was video from this camera. It was 4K, 10-bit, 422, pretty chunky stuff, and that M1 MacBook Air absolutely smashed the job. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I found myself in London with the exact same requirement, footage from this camera, and only the M2 MacBook Air to edit it on. Now, you think with this being the latest version of the MacBook Air, that it would at least match the performance of the M1 version. Well, no, it didn't spectacularly, and this has taught me a big lesson. Before we get started, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Trend Micro and their fantastic premium security suite. So if you're looking for a complete all-in-one solution for device and identity protection in your home, this could be your knight in shining armor. Premium security suite includes a VPN, password manager, mobile security, ID security, and protection against ransomware, email scamming, and other forms of cybercrime. It works across Windows, Macs, Android, iOS, Chromebooks, basically whatever device your family members have, they can get involved. There's even 24 seven support available provided by real human beings if you need help from Trend Micro. And like all of Trend Micro stuff, it's so easy to start using. And I love the fact that Premium Security Suite gives you everything you need to get going. It really is a one-stop shop to keep yourself and your family safe online. And there's no corners cut at all. It's all top quality stuff. Their VPN in particular, I'm a massive fan of, and that secures my internet traffic, whether I'm at home, here in the studio, or at my local favorite coffee shop. So if you're out and about and you wanna make sure your laptop is fully protected, or if you just wanna ensure that your kids are protected from the horrible stuff in the dark web, then the premium security suite from Trend Micro is for you. So thank you to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video, and to find out more, click that link in the description. I got very defensive over the M2 MacBook Air when it was first launched, and that was my first big mistake. For those who weren't aware, when the M2 MacBook Air hit the shelves a few months ago, it received quite a bit of bad press. And that bad press was focused on this, the base model version, which has eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. And this followed some very strenuous testing by Max Tech. I had Max Tech on the channel back then. I'll link above to the interview that I did with my partner podcast co-host Rob. And the reason we had Vadim on the channel back then is because I wasn't particularly impressed with the way they covered their testing of this laptop. They put it through loads of what I saw to be unrealistic tests, benchmarks, and things which normal users and people who are going to buy this laptop don't care about. But that did obviously draw a lot of attention to their tests, and without regurgitating all of the numbers and results, because I don't understand a lot of them, they found that the M2 MacBook Air was slower than its predecessor under certain circumstances. And primarily, this came down to 4K and even 8K video editing, and also a number of stress tests. And to cut a long story short, they found that the M2 chip wilted under pressure compared to the M1 chip that didn't. Why was it worse? Well, apparently, it's down to the way the 256 gigabyte SSD is configured in this laptop. In the M1 version, the 256 gigabyte SSD was split across two NAND chips, as they're called. In the M2 version, there's just one NAND chip. And funny enough, if you upgrade to 512 gigabytes or above, the problem disappears. I'm not going to pretend to understand why that's the case. I still don't really care, to be honest. Although, that's probably why I've got this so wrong. And what happened next? kind of proves that. When the M2 MacBook Air arrived, I compared it against the M1 MacBook Air with a very simple Mark Ellis Reviews test. Now, this wasn't something that Max Tech would be proud of at all. It was literally just testing a video export from Final Cut Pro. It was a 10 minute piece of footage, again from this camera, so 4K, 10 bit color, etc. And I timed the process on both laptops. And with just Final Cut Pro running with no other apps running in the background, both laptops exported the footage in the exact same time. 
So I ran the test again with some background apps running and the M2 MacBook Air was 29 seconds slower than the M1 version in exporting that footage. But despite that, I did find that the M2 MacBook Air was just as responsive during that process as the M1 version. And that didn't really match up with what Max Tech found. When they were doing their stress tests, they found that they could barely use that M2 machine while it was doing those tasks. With my test, that just wasn't the case. I could still use that M2 MacBook Air no problem at all. So I left it at that, although not before suggesting that everyone was setting their trousers on fire about the M2 chip for no reason whatsoever, and I received a barrage of comments telling me that I was wrong and that Apple are duping their customers. I dived in, I argued with people, I lost subscribers, and I kept defending the base model M2. It all got a bit silly. So, what's changed? Well, I went to London recently and found myself with the M2 MacBook Air needing to do some 4K video editing. And thinking back to that trip 12 months ago in Montreal where the M1 version smashed the task, I just thought, no problem, this laptop will get me through. It didn't at all, and this isn't a long story because it ended very quickly. Basically, I sat myself down in a Starbucks, opened the M2 MacBook Air, went into Final Cut Pro, and all I needed to do was add some B-roll to an existing A-roll edit. Really simple stuff, shouldn't be an issue, certainly shouldn't be an issue for this laptop, and within minutes, it ground to a halt. I was getting beach balls, dropped frame messages. It was just an utter dog. In fact, it was so bad I had to abandon the process completely and do some different work, which wasn't ideal because I needed to get that video edit done. A few days later, I decided to run a test between the M2 MacBook Air and the M1 version with the exact same Final Cut Pro project. The M1 version, again, absolutely smashed it. There was no slowdown, no beach balls, no dropped frame messages. It just worked. The M2 version was admittedly a bit better, but it was still a bit sluggish. It still felt a bit unworkable. There was one difference between these two laptops, which is quite a big difference potentially. The M2 MacBook Air is running macOS Ventura, whereas the M1 version is still running macOS Monterey. So at some stage, I do need to do a comparative test with the exact same operating system, but regardless, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue I experienced in that Starbucks a few weeks ago was related to that NAND chip configuration that Max Tech was talking about. And yes, it's strange that a few days later the same laptop with the same Final Cut Pro project performed a bit better, but again that proves how difficult this kind of benchmarking and testing is. But clearly I should have run that kind of test in my original review. What I did in terms of just doing an export wasn't enough. And that as well, it's taught me a lot of things. Don't worry, I'm not about to change my review process. We're not gonna head into an era where Marcos Reviews becomes a benchmark-focused channel. That isn't me, I still have very little interest in it. But what this episode has taught me is that I do need to dig a little bit deeper when other people, other tech reviewers, people who do much more stringent tests than me, like Max Tech, when they find something that clearly isn't quite right, I owe it to you guys to look more deeply into the testing that I do. Because clearly, if you bought the M2 MacBook Air, the base model version, with the intention of occasionally or regularly doing 4K or even 8K video editing on it, then you may possibly have experienced buyer's remorse. And there was me sitting here saying, don't worry, it's all hyperbolic, it's all a big fuss over nothing, the M2 MacBook Air, the base model version, is a fantastic buy. Now I'll counter this by saying that it is a fantastic buy if you buy it for the kind of tasks for which it's intended. And that's what I do with it. I don't, apart from that day in London, I don't use this laptop for 4K video editing. If you're gonna buy the base model M2 MacBook Air for normal, computery stuff, like like I use it, then you're not going to be disappointed. Regardless, that doesn't make the stuff that Max Tech discovered or that I've discovered recently right. Something is wrong with this laptop. It shouldn't be worse than its predecessor under certain circumstances. So my buying guidance for the M2 MacBook Air hasn't really changed, to be honest, but just to reiterate, if you are going to be doing any kind of creative or strenuous work with it, either regularly or occasionally, don't get the base model. Make sure you go above the 256 gigabyte SSD, which is where the issue lies. Get yourself the 512 if you can. Do that and you won't get any buyer's remorse. So anyway, apologies for suggesting that the M2 controversy was all hot air. It wasn't. Hands up, I got that completely wrong. Speaking of the M1 chip, if you've still got some time, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I talk about a brand new exciting project for my beloved M1 Mac Mini.